Chris Godwin and the Tampa Bay Buccaneers agree to a three-year deal overnight, what it means for the Bucs and for another NFC contender, why I'm not afraid of Deshaun Watson, and more details on Jordan Whitehead and Rob Gronkowski. All of that coming up on this episode of the Locked On Bucks podcast. Let's go. You are Locked On Buccaneers, your daily Tampa Bay Buccaneers podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. <laughs> What's up, Bucks Nation? Welcome to the Locked On Bucks podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. We are your daily podcast covering the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, free and available on all platforms, including YouTube. And we thank you for making us your first listen of the day. I am David Harrison. My co-host, James Yarko, and I both cover your Tampa Bay Buccaneers for SB Nation's Bucks Nation. When we aren't here or there, you can find us on Twitter at JRCO underscore Bucks, at DHarrison82, at Locked On Bucks. And at Bucks underscore nation, we thank you again for making us your first listen or your first view every single day. The extension we all knew was coming, but expected a little bit earlier finally came and the Tampa Bay Buccaneers have agreed to a three year contract with wide receiver Chris Godwin, Ian Rappaport of NFL Network reporting the team and the star receiver agreed to a three year deal worth up to $60 million dollars with 40 of it guaranteed. Greg Allman of The Athletic, the godfather of the Locked On Bucks podcast. Shout out to Greg. Always love the great work that he is doing over there for The Athletic. He followed up on that report by adding in that the Buccaneers did add void years in the Chris Godwin deal, making his 2022 salary cap number just $5 million. So saving $13 million in 2022 just by extending Chris Godwin, the deal gives Godwin an average annual value of $20 million, which at the moment is fifth in the NFL behind only Amari Cooper, Keenan Allen, Devontae Adams, and DeAndre Hopkins. Mike Evans, just to compare and contrast the two star receivers, Mike Evans' annual uh, value for his contract, $16.5 million. Speaking of Mike Evans and the salary cap, we've been talking about ways the Buccaneers can get under the salary cap and retain most of their talent all offseason long, and one of the moves that we've been talking about was a simple restructure of Evans' current contract, which is what happened, as was reported Thursday morning. Again, according to Greg Amon, we don't have the hard numbers at this time, at the time of this recording, but some of, of Evans' $14 million for 2022 is now going to be paid out in bonuses, which the Bucks can then spread out over the life, lifespan of Evans' contract uh, to, to free up money for 2022 and for however other many years they spread that bonus to now. And whenever this conversation comes up, I always want to reiterate, this is not Mike Evans taking a pay cut or taking less money. Uh, in, in all actuality, what it is, he's getting uh, a chunk of the money that he's owed in a in, in bonus form. So he's going to get a chunk of it up front. And then the Buccaneers take that money and they spread it out. So again, Mike Evans, great member of the team. Obviously, you love that he's willing to help the team out in any way, shape, or form to help bring back uh, his teammates and maybe make some additions, like maybe Tyre Matthew, who we'll talk about here uh, in just a little bit. But it is important to note, Mike not taking a pay cut. He's definitely getting his money. So congratulations, Mike. Congratulations to the team for making even more money. Again, those numbers, I'm sure, will come out here shortly. So everybody is celebrating Chris Godwin's second contract with the Tampa Bay Buccaneers for good reason. Uh, but nobody more so, guys, than his wife, Mariah. If you don't know the whole story, not going to recap every detail of it, but basically his wife, uh, Mariah, and he, Chris Godwin, high school sweethearts. Uh, Mariah's father coached them in high school football. They were together. Uh, together all through Chris Godwin's Penn State years in the NFL draft, his career in Tampa, obviously, and then getting married recently. Uh, and Mariah posted on Instagram uh, an image and to her story congratulating her husband, posting an image of Chris back in high school wearing the number 12. Of course, her Instagram account underscore Miss 12 M R S T W E L V E underscore Miss 12. And she wrote on the, on the, on the post, you did it. You told me you would, since I met you at 13 on draft day, you told me it doesn't matter where I get picked. I only need a chance. I'm going to take full advantage of the opportunity I get. And I only need a chance. I'm going to win a super bowl and I'm going to make it to a second contract in this league. I only need a chance. And you did exactly what you said you would do. What a ridiculous privilege it is to watch every minute of this story and to take part in it with you. And to see you remain the same kind-hearted, humble, and ruthlessly dedicated person that you've always been. You really did it. And it's a lot more to do. And I can't wait to watch you do it all. If your younger self could see you, he would be in awe. You did it. 
absolutely love that message from Mariah to, again, wide receiver Chris Godwin agreeing to a three-year deal, his second official NFL contract, um, worth up to $60 million with $40 million guaranteed. Congratulations to Chris Godwin, former guest of the show, multiple-time guest here on the show. Uh, looking forward to talking to him again as soon as possible. But that's not the only good news. A lot of people celebrating good news in Tampa, including members of Bucks Nation. Let's continue to hear from you guys. Most of these guys coming back from when Tom Brady announced his return to football. Let's hear one right now. Oh, my God. I just saw the news, so I had to call my favorite podcast. What's up, James? What's up, David? LFG! So I just saw that Brady unretired. He's going to play for Tampa Bay. I found out in McDonald's. And I yelled that at the top of my lungs right here in Boise, Idaho. Brady's coming back and he's playing for the bus. And I kid you guys not, the entire McDonald's came rushing up to my phone to see the announcement on Facebook. That happened. I haven't been so happy in the past two months. Brady's back. Let's go. I'm going to keep it right there. Go Bucks. Woo-hoo! All right. A lot to celebrate this week for the Buccaneers and for Bucks Nation. But what does it mean for some NFC rivals? I'm going to talk about that here in a minute. But first... It's time for Madness College Basketball's tournament is finally upon us. And for all your latest odds, contests, and player props, BetOnline.net is your number one source for all your sports betting needs and info. BetOnline remains the best spot for all your sports scores, podcasts, and news this season. But it's not just basketball. BetOnline is your continued source for all your sports wagering information needs, including live betting and your favorite Vegas casino games. Head to the website today or use your mobile device to learn more about the trends and the action at Bet Online, where the game starts. Thanks again for making the Locks on Bucks podcast your first listen or view every single day. David Harrison coming to you solo. James Jarko off for this episode, but you can find him on Twitter at Jarko underscore Bucks. Find me at dharrison82. And of course, find us both also at BucksNation.com, part of SB Nation. That is on Twitter at Bucks underscore Nation. The show is at Locked on Bucks. Make sure you're also following the Locked on NFL podcast. Locked on experts covering the biggest stories from around the NFL every Monday through Friday in less than 30 minutes. It's free and it's available wherever you get podcasts just like this one. Sometimes, guys, good news gets even better when you realize that your good news is actually bad news for your enemies. And, and you know what I'm talking about. We all get a little bit petty from time to time. It's OK. Some some don't like to admit it. I say embrace it. Um, I, I think it's it's kind of fun every once in a while. You know what I'm talking about. The hater at work uh, who's who's absolutely torn up inside to see you get a promotion. Or maybe it's, you know, maybe it's even further. Maybe it's the, the teacher in high school told you you're going to be nothing as cliche as that is sometimes. Uh, and now you're basking in all of your success and, and uh, you know, rubbing it in their face, so to speak. So, look, those types of things happen. And in this case, we're not talking about haters and all that. We're talking about the fact that. That the NFC is honestly looking more and more like a two-horse race. And I'm looking at the Tampa Bay Buccaneers and the Los Angeles Rams, who just, oh, by the way, happen to be the last two Super Bowl winners. Look, the Dallas Cowboys, NFC East champions, got it, but they're coming down. They lost Randy Gregory. Amari Cooper is gone. And after already looking very beatable in 2021, the Dallas Cowboys really aren't getting any better. They're, they're actually coming back down to uh, the mean there in the NFC East just a little bit. Um, The New Orleans Saints obviously are enrolled in a quarterback search and all those things. And you know what? Maybe they beat the Buccaneers again twice this year. Obviously, we don't want it to happen. We don't hope it happens. But if it does, at the end of the day, who wins the division? Who moves into the playoffs? Who gets further in the playoffs? Those are the things you really want to hang your hat on. And then obviously we have the Rams, San Francisco 49ers. I mean, Jimmy G is not going to be able to throw a football again until about July. And obviously, you saw what kind of happened to them and whether or not he moves on. Trey Lance speculation that he may not be ready. Kyler Murray is angry uh, in Arizona. And oh, by the way, the Seattle Seahawks have Drew Locke. So that only leaves one other real contender, right? And that is the Green Bay Packers. And specifically, we're talking about them. Yep, they got Aaron Rodgers back, and and that's great, I suppose. Uh, But it wasn't cheap. They spent a lot of money to get that guy back on their roster for 2022. But they also have a situation uh, going on and continuing to develop with star wide receiver Devontae Adams, who, like Chris Godwin, got hit with the franchise tag, but who has since told the Green Bay Packers that he will not play under that franchise tag in 2022. And if you look at it, guys, Godwin's deal, again, $20 million on average over the life of the contract, $40 million of that guaranteed over those three years. Really what it does is it resets the wide receiver market. So he's got a top five number attached to his name right now but when you look at it contractually he's really going to be considered 
kind of the number two guy in Tampa, you would expect Mike Evans to kind of take up the the biggest annual chunk of salary cap space uh, between the two. But because of the progression of contracts and how this whole thing works, Chris Godwin's is more. So now all these wide receivers who think they're above the Mike Evans, Chris Godwin threshold, or even at the Mike Evans, Chris Godwin threshold, they're going to want more money. They're going to want to, again, uh, eclipse their counterparts. And that's where some of this pettiness comes in, right? They're going to want to look down on the contract chart and look at some of their position peers and, and say, hey, you know, I've got more money than you. What are you going to do now? So so that's really kind of a second order effect of how this Godwin deal is going to impact the Green Bay Packers because they already had to get rid of quite a few impact players in the roster. And I'm talking about guys that got picked up almost immediately after they were they were released from the Green Bay Packers just to get under the salary cap. So when you look at Adam's annual salary versus Godwin's, Adams still has more. Again, remember, Chris Godwin is now top five. Devontae Adams is still above him on that list, but only by $145,000. That's not going to be enough for Devontae Adams. So basically, by signing Chris Godwin to this deal and by Chris Godwin averaging $20 million a year over the life of this contract, the Green Bay Packers are going to have to jump. I mean, you're going to have to jump to at least $22 million. Honestly, you're probably going to be looking at $25 million annually. Now, of course, the Packers can do some things contractually to do what the Buccaneers did. Again, Chris is only going to count for $5 million against the salary cap in 2022. The Packers are, are fully capable of doing some of those things too. But when you talk about salary cap, right, and this kind of reinforces the importance of it. And I know it might confuse some of you who listen to us or, or watch us on a regular basis because we tell you all the time, the salary cap is make-believe, it's pretend, it's Fugazi, it's Fugazi, it's all those things. And it is. But – it also still exists. You know what I mean? Like it, it, it still exists, but not to the fullest extent that people think it is. Really, the salary cap is a big thing for the fan bases to kind of worry about and for the media to, to worry about. We like to kind of bring you guys what we believe is the truth and, and kind of dumb down the, the, the worry over the salary cap because it's not as important. You see the Buccaneers bring back a lot of key players making some moves to stay under the salary cap, right? That's the kind of stuff we're talking about. But you still have to manage it properly. And what the Green Bay Packers have shown is, one, by making the decision or agreeing to paying Aaron Rodgers as much money as, as they are and, and guarantee money, especially, uh, that basically kind of hinders their ability to manage the salary cap, right? But the, the reason they're releasing so many of these contracts is because they're not reworkable. They're not deals that you can then free up money for while keeping the player. So you have to give up. You have to basically throw out the baby with the bathwater in that sense. That's where mismanagement of salary cap comes in. And that's what the Green Bay Packers are facing. And now they're facing a wide receiver who wants even more money. And honestly, the fact that Devontae Adams or his camp or someone in his camp is letting this be known publicly shows you that the two sides are not close to a deal. It doesn't say they won't come to a deal in, a, in the next day or two or a week or a month. Um, but it shows you that he is not really happy with how the conversations are going in Green Bay. That's the reason these things get leaked is because the two sides are aren't coming together. So when you look at it, how much is, is Devante really going to work with the green Bay Packers? Is he, is he going to be willing to take a deal that maybe spreads his earnings out a little bit the way that Chris Godwin is, or is he going to look for a big chunk of money up front and locked in guarantees? Cause those guarantees are really what's important when you're talking about salary cap management. It's an interesting situation brewing in green Bay, something that's going to hinder potentially uh, the possibility of the green Bay Packers, becoming contenders again and rising up uh, against the rest of the NFC, especially as the Buccaneers get a lot of these players for one more year. They get a lot of continuity back. And even the Dallas Cowboys have some continuity going on there. The Los Angeles Rams, obviously, uh, trying to bring back as many pieces as they can, even though they're losing Von Miller, but they'll get Robert Woods back healthy as well uh, in the beginning of the season. So it just kind of reinforces that the salary cap is fluid because people who manage it keep it fluid. They've opened the doors, and it doesn't just exist that way. You have to actually work at it, and it, honestly, it just makes me even happier. Hopefully, it makes all the Bucks Nation happier that you have Jason Light, Mike Greenberg, all those people in the front office doing the amazing work. And then it kind of leads into Deshaun Watson. Look, uh, Deshaun Watson is a big name. The trade is going to go down. It's going to be a big trade. Uh, as of Thursday morning, it looks like it's down to the Saints and the Falcons, so almost assuredly Deshaun Watson coming to the NFC South. Look, shout out to my guy, Mike Keywalk. I was scripting today's show and already had it in the script, but then he goes and tweets that he's not really scared of where Deshaun Watson lands. And I'm in the same boat. At this point in time, I don't care. Go to New Orleans, go to Atlanta, go to Carolina. It doesn't really matter to me because when you look at what the team that acquires Deshaun Watson, you look at the New Orleans Saints, for example, the draft capital they're going to have to give up 
to get Deshaun Watson. And then the players, like the reported players that are potentially involved in this trauma offensive linemen, and then the draft capital is going to keep them from adding valuable talent. Honestly, for 2022, I think the team that brings in Deshaun Watson is actually going to bring their team down a little bit because I also expect Deshaun, like we've talked about before, to be suspended for probably at least half the season. Um, honestly, I wouldn't be surprised and I would applaud the NFL for suspending for the entire season. So you're going to see that kind of take effect and that impact the team. So honestly, anybody trading for Deshaun Watson, in my opinion, in my view, and we'll see how it comes to fruition, is really doing so looking at 2023 and beyond. So I'm not worried for 2022. Not worried about it. We'll worry about that later. We'll let that be future Dave, future James, future Bucks Nations. Problem, of course, can't all be good news for the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, can it? Because that's never how it works. But there is some more coming. At least we think there is. And another thing coming is another voicemail from a member of Bucks Nation. Hey, David and James. It's Chauvin from Miami. I'm sure you guys already know. It's been about 20 minutes, but he's back. Tom Brady is back. Ecstatic. The family's going crazy. All we need to... Like, all we need to know is when is Ali Marpet going to come out of retirement, man? We need that guy. We need this line back to protect this quarterback who's giving it one more year. We all hope for it. David knew it. James, I know you knew it too, but, oh, man, it's happening. It's finally happening. Fire the cannons. We are ready for next season. Let's see how the free agent signings go, who we can keep. Let's, I'm I'm excited. It's been great. Take care, guys. We'll talk about one move we're not a fan of, but also some more good news potentially coming to the Buccaneers. But first, with the ever-increasing number of makes and models of vehicles, it's literally impossible for your local chain store or your car dealership to stock all the parts, all the brands you're ever going to want or need for your vehicle. Why go there and deal with the hassle of having limited options and then being charged 30, 50, even 100% more for those parts at your dealership or at your, your parts store? than what you can get for at rockauto.com with a much larger selection. Rock Auto is a family business serving do-it-yourselfers for over 20 years, and their prices are reliably low for every customer. It doesn't matter if you're a professional home business, professional business, if you're a do-it-yourself or whatever it is, rockauto.com is going to have reliably low prices and everything you could ever need. Brake parts, they got them. Tail lamps, they got them. Motor oil, they got it. Even, even new carpet for your car, you can get it at rockauto.com go to rockauto.com right now see all the parts available for your car or truck right locked on in there how did you hear about us box so you know that we sent you amazing selection reliably low prices all the parts your car will ever need at rockauto.com final segment here in today's episode of the locked on bucks podcast david harrison coming solo on this episode on twitter find me at d harrison 82 find my co-host james at jarco underscore bucks the show's at locked on bucks and I don't know about you guys. I know James is, is a little disappointed. I know Evan Klosky of WTSP 10 Tampa Bay is a little surprised. I know a lot of you are also surprised. The Buccaneers didn't make an offer to Jordan Whitehead, and that was a shocker uh, to learn and develop. For one, it was it was surprising to see the deal that Jordan got from the New York Jets and that the Buccaneers didn't uh, even match. Or you know, you would assume Jordan would want to come back. And then, of course, sent the tweet talking about the business side of things and the disappointment. The Bucs said they valued him. But the bottom line, guys, I think that you can't pay everyone and you can't. And and at the end of the day, when you are managing the salary cap, like we're just talking about with the Green Bay Packers, yes, you can get yourself in trouble, but you have to make smart decisions. Sometimes, guys, you have to make tough decisions. So to find out that the Buccaneers didn't make an offer to Jordan Whitehead, it's still a little bit disappointing, but try to play devil's advocate, right? So what we do is we give our honest opinion. James and Evan, I think they they covered the disappointment of not keeping Jordan very, very well. I agree 100% with everything they said. So to get that part of my opinion and their opinion, check out yesterday's episode. By the way, almost 12,000 views of that episode as we sit here and speak today. So much love to all of you guys out there for for showing us the support that you continue to show us over the years. Uh, truly, truly grateful for that and feel greatly blessed for you guys tuning into what we have to say. But again, let's let's play devil's advocate, right? For one... I think Mike Edwards basically priced out Jordan Whitehead. So Mike Edwards is is going to play is going to play in 2022 for 2.7 million dollars on the books this season. Jordan Whitehead, I don't have the official guaranteed numbers, but his deal two years, 14 and a half million, so potentially 7.25. It's that 7.25 is the average. Don't know what his current year guarantee is going to be, obviously, but you have to assume at a 14 and a half million dollar contract, you're probably looking at what eight to ten of that, maybe even 12 potentially. 
uh, is going to be guaranteed. So you're probably looking at four or five million dollars on the books this year, about twice what Mike Edwards is going to play. And yes, Mike Edwards not as good against the run as Jordan Whitehead. But if you're the Buccaneers and if you're looking to return your front seven as much as possible or as healthy as possible, then you have the best run defense in the National Football League in your front seven already. And Mike Edwards, while he may not be as good of a box safety as Jordan Whitehead, still a serviceable box safety. I think he's shown that. And he has the ball hawk skills that Evan uh, referenced on yesterday's episode. And again, you go back to the way the Buccaneers lost games, right? You looked at that when the Buccaneers looked most susceptible. It was when they were getting gashed in the passing game. Now you go to Indianapolis and they got got a little gash in the run game there too by Jonathan Taylor, who probably should have been uh, the MVP if Carson Wentz didn't mess it up for him. But you look at it by and large, and more and more it's passing league, right? You look at your biggest competitors. So first things first, right? You always want to win to your division. How do you get to the top of your division? Well, if you're Tampa, the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, you're already at the top of your division, right? The NFC South is yours as long as you go take it. If if you don't win the NFC South, it's going to be because of something completely tragic and, and detrimental that I don't even want to start offering up possibilities of what led to that result. So now that we've won the division or now that we are in the position to win the division, how do we put ourselves in position to win the conference? How do we beat the Los Angeles Rams? You have to stop the pass. You have to stop their passing attack. I don't know if they're going to bring back Odell Beckham. Robert Woods is going to be coming back healthy. Obviously, Cooper Cup is a stud. You expect the Rams are probably going to spend a draft pick uh, on a wide receiver. Van Jefferson looks good. Cam Akers is coming back healthy. But you should be able to stop Cam Akers. Now you need to keep that pass coverage solid. And Mike Edwards, I love Jordan Whitehead. Mike Edwards is the better pass defender. So I think when you look at it from a financial standpoint and you look at it from a play standpoint, that's possibly right where this conversation comes into play now. A lot of people talked about Tyron Matthew. Evan and James talked about Tyron Matthew. I love Tyron. Would love to see Tyron Matthew in a Buccaneers uniform. I'm not sure it makes financial sense. On Spot Track has Matthew valued at $14 million per year on average. Now, yes, he could take the Brady price, right? Talk about like uh, State Farm and all that stuff. Maybe he takes the Brady price, but is he going to take half? Is he going to take $7 million a year on that contract? Because that would match what Jordan Whitehead got from the Jets. I don't know that Tyron takes a 50% pay cut just to play for the Buccaneers. Stranger things have happened. So by all means, hopefully, if it, if if there is a world where Tyron Matthew plays for the Buccaneers for like $5 million 2022, I'm all in on it. I love it. But bottom line, Edwards, better against the pass, and the Bucs have the best rush defense up front if they can bring everybody back. And again, while the cap is fluid, it does exist to a certain extent. And if they're going to try to bring back and Dominican Sue, Will Golson, Rob Gronkowski, Jason Pierre-Paul, maybe they need to keep that money free. And I really think that's what this is about is that Jordan Whitehead basically didn't want to wait. The Bucs said that they they value Jordan Whitehead. They told his people at the Combine that they wanted him back, according to Jen Elaine of ESPN. But prioritizing where that money needs to be spent, I don't think Jordan Whitehead was high enough on that, that priority list to get an offer. Yeah, they needed to clear some of these other contracts first, get some of these other guys back first, and then address Jordan Whitehead's situation. And in the meantime, Whitehead gets an offer that he can't pass up. Don't blame him. At all, but I really believe that's kind of the way this matriculated because you still have Indominus Sue that we don't have a decision. We don't even know if he's going to play this year right now. I, I don't have any signs that he's going to retire or not going to retire. But if the Bucks can bring him back on a team friendly deal, you figure they're going to want to do that. Will Golson, a very underrated part of that defensive front, if they can bring him back, they'll want to do that too. Because yes, you want to add pass rushing ability up front, but you also want to maintain the status quo, right? So if you lose all your rush stop ability, but you gain some pass rush ability, teams are just going to run. All over you. And then Rob Gronkowski, uh, we expect to come back. A clip of Rob Gronkowski leaving a barbershop. If you haven't uh, already seen that, check out Zach Blobner's uh, sharing of the video on Twitter. Um, he's he's basically, we don't see the question, but essentially you're assuming he's asked about returning as he's leaving this barbershop. He responds, there's a very good chance. And then he kind of jokes about Tom making him wait for two months, thinking he was going to retire. So now he's going to make Tom wait a little bit. Uh, before he makes his decision, but we expect Rob Gronkowski back, especially OJ Howard signing with the Buffalo Bills. To me, and to pretty much everybody, pretty much seals the deal. Rob Gronkowski coming back to Tampa Bay. I'm not going to speak it as an official word yet, but hopefully that word will come down soon. Speaking of words coming down, more celebrations from Bucks Nation uh, with the return of Tom Brady. We're going to hear from two members of Bucks Nation right now before we wrap up today's show. Hey, James. Hey, David. This is Brian from Tampa. Uh, this is actually the second time I've called your show, and Talk, uh, left my comments. 
Um, I just saw the report that Tom Brady came back to Tampa Bay. He's going to be back for his 23rd season. That's great. That's awesome. Now we got to turn our position to the draft. I was thinking maybe Zion Johnson, if that's the possibility. Just think of the possibilities we're going to have with Tom Brady back. I think we can go far. So tell me what you guys think. I'd love to hear it. Bye. What's up, boys? Tyler from Boston. I just have two words for you. Let's go. <laughs> Welcome back, Tommy. All right, guys. Yeah, theme throughout a lot of these voicemails. Ali Marpet potentially returning. He has said he is not returning and so far has held fast, held firm to that assertion. And then, of course, the potential drafting of Zion Johnson, a more and more popular uh, opinion among members of Bucks Nation. We thank all of you who called in. You see how long it took us to get all of them played, right? So that's how many of you called in. We greatly appreciate you guys doing that. Uh, very v- definitely wanted to help celebrate your celebration or join in the celebration of Tom Brady returning to the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. And we thank you for making Locked On Bucks podcast your first listen of the day. Now make your second listen the Locked On NFL Draft podcast. Ryan Tracy and former NFL cornerback Eric Crocker bring the NFL draft to life every day with insight and analysis on college football prospects and NFL front offices. Free and available wherever you get podcasts just like this one. We're going to be back. We are going to be talking about updated draft strategies as these players get re-signed by the Buccaneers. There are four big names, five big names, sorry, remaining unsigned for the Buccaneers. Rob Gronkowski, Leonard Fournette, William Golson, Jason Pierre-Paul, and Indomitian Sue. We're going to be ranking those players on our next episode of the order that we want to see the Buccaneers bring these players back. If you want to get in on that discussion, go ahead and hit us up at LockedOnBucksPodcast at gmail.com or call in like so many of you do. Be a part of the show just by dialing 813-444-5841. Again, that number, 813-444-5841. You'd answer our question. You can drop a question or a thought of your own. We have a question waiting in the voicemail box that we hope to get to on our next episode. For James Jarko, I'm David Harrison. Until we speak again, make sure you're checking out everything we're writing over at BucksNation.com. Find us on Twitter at dharrison82, at jarko underscore Bucks, and at Locked on Bucks. And if you're out and about, please be safe. Be kind to one another. Wash your hands. Fire those cannons. And thank you for joining us right here at Locked on Bucks.